Whiskey for my man. Beer for my house. You got it? I sing a hell of a lot better than you. You do. We're gonna need bread pans, Jason. Uh, two, three. got to do that one. Here, we can make it obnoxious for you if you wish. Smoke alarm. So, burning your bread alarm. I'm Paul Thompson. I'm co-owner of Carol's Bakery. I do all the baking and the grunt work. The grunt work. Uh, do dishes and I have no control over anything that goes on in the front of the bakery. No, I'm kidding. I'm Colleen Thompson. I'm um, the other half of the, the bakery here. I do the rest of the stuff. I do the decorating, the displaying, the um, cleaning, the, the books, and that kind of stuff. I'm the number cruncher. I'm the details. He's the personality. Welcome to Spencer. Most importantly, welcome to Carol's. This sweet spot on Grand Avenue is considered a gem in Northwest Iowa. It was founded in the early 20s, and in 1928, Joe and John Carroll bought the place and changed the name. The rest, of course, is history. In 1951, Joe Carroll's children, Joe Jr. and Marge, took over the business. They worked side by side for 40 years, and in 1991, Paul and Colleen Thompson took on the legacy. They say the first day was a letdown. Only two customers, but it turned out to be a total fluke. 23 years later, and Clay County still can't get enough of Carol's. Uh, what time I, should you get up and what time <laughs> do you get up? I, uh, I try and get up and get here by 3.30. Um, if it's after four, then I'm really out of luck and the whole day goes bad. Um, and then her day is really bad. Um, but yeah, 3.30, um, this last week it's been bad snow. Uh, I come early to, to snow blow the, the sidewalks and stuff. And so I got here at 1.30. Bakers are known for being early risers. But just what do they do all morning? What I need is eight and a half pounds of uh, flour and donut mix. And this just counterbalances. Now normally I get sugar in 50 pound sacks, but I went through 250 pounds this week, so I had to go to the grocery store and buy some. One more time. has a baker friend in the Twin Cities, and they challenge each other to come up with the next great baked good, sending competitive pictures via text. This maple bacon long john made the cut. One rogue pastry even got to the sampling division, but not for long. Meet Jason. He does morning prep work with Paul, Jason used to cut down trees, but he hated the seasonal labor. He visited Carol's one morning for donuts and coffee and loved how the place smelled. On a whim, he asked if they were hiring, and they said yes. As he sprinkles flour on the workbench in front of him, he tells me over his shoulder, I got lucky. Plus, there are always nice people coming into the bakery. You never get some grumpy person coming in here buying a donut with a flour on the face. They're always smiling and happy. It smells good, you know? Yeah, I love working at the bakery. You never deal with people that are mean.
It's quiet. Carol's is closed on Sundays, but this is no ordinary weekend. Once a year, Paul's sister Jane travels down from Minnesota to help them get ready for Christmas. Culinary talent runs in the family. A lot goes on upstairs, but the dimly lit basement of the bakery is equally important, because that is where they make candy. You'll have to come to here, this side, Jane, with gloves. Or the black ones, even. So what we're doing is dumping 242 degree hot caramel good. Drip it on the bench. And we're gonna make peanut caramels. After the nut clusters, fudge, and other confections have had time to set, it's back upstairs to assemble the trays. It has to be KSCD too. It's a typical occurrence at the big. That or rolling his eyes at me. No, I don't roll your eyes. My eyes at you. I roll them behind your back. There you go. This way the girls can uh, just put the trays together. I can do kind of the non-artsy -arty, thingy because I have no artsy thingy to... He just puts them on and makes I just, ugly. I, plop I plop it on the tray and go. It's like really fine. We're doing how many? 25. Oh, those two, okay. Yeah. 25. Did you? Well, the fun about it all is that there's stuff left over. It's like, no. Oh, Both of the guys, next to 6 o'clock, because it's 6 o'clock, the Star Spangled Banners play, yep. and they, they both say, play ball. Play ball! <laughs> yep, as soon as the Star Spangled Banner gets done. By picking up so many sugar cookies, by the end of the, the day, I'll have sugar shoved underneath my fingernails, and then no matter how much you um, soak tonight, they will be there for until they dissolve naturally. So it'll be tender tomorrow. Anyone who's baked from scratch knows it isn't a quick process. Colleen points out that Carol's differs from the competition because they rarely use preservatives. That also means that they don't keep pastries on hand for weeks at a time. Most of my job, I'd say 90% of it, is working a day ahead. What I wish people would realize is it's not instantaneous, like a glazed donut. You know, it takes half an hour to mix the dough, then the dough sits on the bench for 20 minutes, at least. Then I have to cut it. And that takes, you know, another half hour total. By the time it, it sits and I get it cut, well, then it, then it has to raise, you know, proof up. And that takes well, about 15, 20 minutes, you know, in the summer. In the winter, it takes longer because it's cold. And then it takes about five minutes to fry. Uh, so to get a glazed donut and to cool, and, and, to cool, and then glaze it, you know, so you're looking at, what, two hours to, 
to get a donut on. You can't just whip out a batch. Basically, you know, on the cost of a glazed donut, we make two cents on it. We're watching our pennies. We don't make huge amounts of money. We, we make a lot of little pennies that go together and we, we, we recycle the pennies that if, you know, like if we make, we screw up on a batch of cake for some, forget to put the salt in or whatever, yeah. then we actually take those, that screwed up cake and we have recipes that we can make like uh, soft molasses cookies out of them. And then we'll have, make, uh, add more sugar and molasses to it and bake it off again and, right. and, and make cookies so we at least don't throw away the ingredients. So who in the world eats all of this hard work? Pounds of butter, truckloads of sugar, pallets of flour. Where does it all go? Paul and Clean are the most wonderful people in, uh, in Spencer. I like it because uh, it's, uh, it's a good place to get together and socialize. Everything is always good. Is that okay? Okay. We don't want these guys to eat it, so make sure you grab it quick. Okay. Oh, you gotta eat before we do, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's so it's got some coconut in it and some chocolate. And Have a good day. Something I shouldn't eat, but I do. It. And, I, and I only come in, I want to spend two dollars, and I spend seven or eight. And they're always accommodating. Um, I come with friends for coffee during the week, some usually have their homemade toast. Oh, I like like the rolls and donuts and stuff. Been coming for many years. Early life when we come, it's basically it's it's just kind of nice to sit and relax and read the paper and drink your coffee. Yeah. Exciting. Sit up a little bit. There you go. Now look at her. Look at the camera. Smile at the camera. <laughs> Logie. Do you like donuts? Say mm -hmm. donuts! I like the chocolate and frosting. I like sprinkles. Three or four times. About 6 a.m. in the morning, I get my coffee and Danish should take to work. It's just awesome. I do love their donuts though, and their old boys are especially good. It's just, it's a good place to, to visit. That's how we like to start out our day. <laughs> yeah. How do you eat your donuts, Max? Do you eat the top first? Yeah. But then what about the bottom? Do you eat the bottom? No, not yet. Hmm? Why not? Because the top first, then the bottom. And what about you, Kate? You too? You eat the top? You're one. <laughs> I'm three. No. I'm three. No, you're one. You're welcome. Glad to do it. Are we going to see you next Saturday? Next Saturday. Yeah, you'll see us. Thank you, too. We'll see you next, not next Saturday. Good job. Can you put your sunglasses on for me? Can you put your glasses on? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> cool, dude. cool dude in the shade. I've known Paul and Colleen for 20 years. When I was a bakery manager at Hy-Vee, I used to come and pester Paul and borrow things when I ran out. <laughs> and I've been, I've been around since their daughter was in an infant seat on their workbench while they were working and have been pretty loyal customers ever since. Yeah, see, we've seen, we've seen Sonny grow up and we've seen Paul regress. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm scraping the pan for the customer uh, so he could get all the dribbles and the caramel and the slivered almonds off of this. Because uh, he made a big show of wanting this when Colleen waited on him. So now we gotta take it all out there for him. Take them the coffee too, because they'll probably need refills. <laughs> Paul and Colleen treasure their customers. 
and the customers love them right back. These owners are often the first to find out about pregnancies, big anniversaries, milestone birthdays, and surprise parties. It's estimated that 15 to 20% of customers don't even come through the front door. They park in the back and walk right through the kitchen. You know, we have some people that, that they're going to sit here for several hours, and they will purposely park in the back lot and walk all the way through. Some of the, the cocky ladies, the, you know, that the come and visit. And they're uh, here for hours. And then they're here for hours. They'll come in the back, and, and so then they'll stop and talk to me about what's going on on the bench if I'm back there, or what's mixing, or what I'm making. And it, it actually is pretty fun. You know, they come for a donut, they come for a cup of coffee, uh, families. Um, you know, when grandpa and grandma come, you know, they come here for Saturday morning breakfast. You know, they'll come and, 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 and stuff. Um, it's a special occasion. It's a special occasion. It's part of the it's, celebration. Americans always kind of congregate in the kitchen. You know, and especially my heritage in, from Minnesota. You know, when, when we get together, we stand in the kitchen and visit and stuff. And so um, I, I think that's, that's the thing is um, good home cooking, good, you know, it's not out of a box. You know, they know it's scratch. Um, that I, you know, we fry our own. You know, and we're we're baking. That they they can get a, um, a a good donut roll, cup of coffee, and and be kind of part of the neighborhood. You know, it, yeah, we're downtown, and and we're not the old fashioned um, from you know 30 years ago where there was a bakery in every neighborhood, especially in the city. Um, but here it it is. We're we're part of the neighborhood. We're part of the community. Call it optimism or just plain determination. But Paul and Colleen say bad days at the bakery don't happen. Just bad moments. Good days, you know, it's... We'll say, oh, people are fun today. Yeah. Yeah. And, or, or we'll be really busy and, and, and it's like, God, that was fun. But everything clicks, you know, like you're working in a galley kitchen, it's like everything's smooth and, and, and it yeah. flows and it's just like a... It's like a uh, dance. Colleen's father was a baker himself, and he donated fruit cakes and donuts on a regular basis to the Boy Scouts as his own way of giving back. It didn't go unnoticed. A scout troop in Cedar Rapids painted a wooden dowel to look like a donut, mounted it on a plaque, and presented it to Colleen's father to honor him. A few years ago, Paul and Colleen almost sold the bakery. They had made it the best they possibly could and were ready for life's next great adventure. Two days before the sell, Carol's was swamped with business. So much business, in fact, that the sale never went through. After regrouping and realizing that maybe the bakery wasn't done with them, Colleen had the inscription from her father's plaque painted on the ceiling joists in the dining room. It reads as follows. Wherever you roam, whatever your goal, keep your eye on the donut and not on the hole. It turns out that being thankful for what you do have is what makes Carol's so special. Oh, I love what I do. Do we like what we do? We're both high. <laughs> We're sappy. Um. <laughs> I'm getting old. I love what I do uh, on, a, on an overall basis. Um, I love the customers. We're, we're emotional, we're, <laughs> this is silly. Um, we're passionate about what we do. The minute it's not fun, we've always said this, if the minute it's not fun, we won't do it anymore. To see the little ones growing up is really something, and for me, to um, to get a little fist bump, to to come around the corner, oh, that's special. 